I need to teach her a lesson. I knew she was going to come after me. So there's no real contract you're saying because you're 17? Yeah. Tabitha was adopted. I wanted to transform my backyard. I wanted the oh, best yard on the sorry. block. Scam lady right here trying to ruin my reputation. You're scammer. He's not even a licensed contractor. What they're saying is the truth. Plaintiff Catherine Baldwin claims her little sister needs to learn a lesson about responsibility. She's suing her for $455 for car repairs. Defendant Tabitha Wheeler claims she didn't even have a license when the car went in for repairs. She says she owes her sister nothing. It's case 112 on the docket, Baldwin versus Wheeler. Oh, okay. We have the plaintiff, Ms. Baldwin. Yes. And you are suing your sister, Ms. Wheeler, for $455 for car repairs. Correct. And tell me about it. Well, um, I'm suing my sister um, for the brake repair for my mom's vehicle um, for $455 for a 2012 Chevy Equinox. Okay, it's your mo mom's vehicle. Correct, but I'm power of attorney. And you're charging her to fix the brakes, why? Uh, because she drove the car for two years. Oh, okay. And said that she would pay for the brakes. She said she would just in a conversation with you? Did text she message, text you? I have text messages. May I look at that, please? Yeah, sure. Let's see what the allegation is first. Before I go through all of these, she's saying you agreed. I didn't even know she was getting the brakes done. And I got told by one of my other sisters that they were getting done. And out of just the fact to get her off my back, because I knew that she was going to, I said it. But she was not happy with me only paying half, and she wanted the full amount, which I did not agree to. So tell me this whole story, how this all came about. When my mom was going to go to an assisted living, that they were not going to behave for the car. That was about a week or two before the brakes were done. I told her that I wanted the car and that I would be able to take out a loan and all that, which I do did take out the loan. This car where we're talking about her paying for the brakes, you were prepared to buy this car from your sister. Yeah, I bought it from GM Financial and my mom, not Kathy at all. What do you say about this? What's... Tabitha was adopted when, from, you know, uh, so there's 32 years difference between us. Oh, between us. you and sister, okay. Right, and um, I need to teach her a lesson that what she lesson said that she that? would pay for the brakes and therefore she needs, to, she needs to pay for them. The lesson you're teaching her is to pay for the brakes, why? Because she drove the car. So she drove and the she... car, so you're saying if you're going to have the I enjoyment have of driving the, the car, then you ought to pay for the upkeep is what Correct. you're... Correct. For and the you... two years that I was driving it, yeah. I only had a permit. So I wasn't even a licensed driver under the car. But you were, in terms of just being fair here, it was in a sense your, you were the one driving the car all the time. I did keep maintenance on the car. The only yeah. thing I did not do was the brakes. I did the oil change, I did the wipers, I made sure gas was in the car. Okay, all so of that. you did all that. Okay. She says you agreed to pay to fix the brakes? I did when I was 17 only to get her off the back because I knew she was going to come after me. So there's no real contract you're saying because you're 17? Yeah. In other words, you can't make a contract with a minor? And now you're handing me these, which is the text messages to her. I will also make some type of plan about paying that back. Right. Because you were putting the money up. You're still planning on buying the car, right? Are you still paying 455 for the brakes? And then you answered, I thought the brakes were 440, and yes, I'm going in on the 8th to do the papers. And I just questioned why she didn't include that into the price when I was taking out the loan. Well, that and is an excellent point. How much are you paying for the car? I paid, in total, $8,225.60. OK. Now, just as a family, she's your loving sister. Mm -hmm. She's buying a car, which at that age, that's a it's lot a of nice responsibility car. to take on, $8,000. At the time that she made the payment arrangements to, for the breaks, she had $1,100 in her checking account. She told me that she was going to pay for the breaks. She's 18. And, you know, maybe she's graduating high school. And it's almost a time to celebrate. You go into the card stores and happy 18th, good luck, whatever your plans are. She's going out to buy a new car. It just seems small within a family 
to say to a younger sister getting on her own feet, I'm suing you for $445. Say, you know what? I do think you ought to pay for that, but this is my graduation gift to you. This is my big sister saying, go into this world, knock them dead, do it. Instead of coming to court and saying, I'm going to teach her a lesson. That's, I don't know what the lesson really is. You know what? It's going to be a, a bunch of bitterness where a big sister didn't say, Forget it. She's your I, sister. I, I agree. I agree with what it is that you're saying. At the same time, I'm power of attorney over my mom. Yes. I take care of my husband's father. Yes. Um, I have a lot of responsibilities on my shoulders. Yeah. And I can't afford $455 every time one of the girls decides that they need their brakes fixed. So they told me that they would pay for the brakes. So I just expected that that's what they would do. Okay. All right. That's a fair answer. That's a fair answer. What about that? What about saying, you know, I'm not trying to make life difficult no, for you. No. Honestly, I like you guys. I want it to work out. And I'm just saying it's reasonable on that side to say, yeah, this is my car. In the real world, things go wrong. Maybe it wasn't an expense I expected, but with a new car. I was excited for her to, that she got the loan. I, I went to the bank. Why don't you split it? Why don't you split it? I offered to pay for half, and she was not happy with that. She wanted the full amount and only the full amount. I'll fine for the plaintiff for half the amount, $227. Can you just tell me the lesson I was supposed to learn? The lesson that you were supposed to learn, honey, is that you are your name. And when you make a promise that you're going to follow through. And where was your promise with me? What promise was that? To be by my side through I everything. I have always been by your side. <laughs> always. Okay. Always been by your side, haven't I? No, not once. Not when mom was in the hospital. Not when I was alone. When you needed somebody, <laughs> I always came. Only if it was in your favor. But, but. After the stress that I've caused to, the sleepless nights, the like grinding to sleep, everything, I don't want to talk to it. Plaintiff Denise Chu dreamed of a beautiful backyard, like Oprah's. But what she got was an empty lot filled with garbage. She's suing for $2,000 for an unfinished construction project. Defendant Raul Alvarez claims he did the work he was paid to do. This is case number 242 on the docket, Chu versus Alvarez. Okay, we have the plaintiff, Ms. Chu. You are suing the defendant, Mr. Alvarez, for $2,000 for an unfinished backyard remodel. Yes. Okay. Your Honor, I'm here to sue this crook for misrepresentation of my backyard. I had a vision for my backyard. I wanted to transform my backyard. I wanted the Trying best yard on the life. block, okay, and I love that. Talk now. I told him that. Yeah, what's your yeah. vision? My vision is here. The vision I had is to transform my backyard like Oprah's. I'm a huge fan you, of Oprah's. Oprah's well, my you idol. You pay for it. Okay, okay. I did. Oh, I paid you $1,000. I'm going to give you a chance. You want to make your backyard like Oprah's? Like Oprah's. Oprah's my idol. See? Oprah has curly hair. I have curly hair. Oprah has five dogs. I have five dogs. Was Oprah your favorite talk show host? Yes. Oh, no. <laughs> no, she not <laughs> You should be ashamed well, of yourself trying yeah. to Yeah, well, there's a lot of cases coming out. <laughs> no, I'm teasing. So, I'm okay, that's honest, beautiful. This is you want to make it look like that? Yes. And I told him that, and he said he could do this, help me with this. So this is a vision I had. He told me he could help me transform my backyard. He didn't do that. Instead, he stole my money and left well, with well, Okay, okay. What did he do? Oh, I have pictures. He told me he was going to bring a crew of three to four people, clean up all the rubbish, he was going to dig dirt up and then frame my yard and have a truck come out and pour concrete. Okay. That's not what he did. So you talked to him about what you wanted. He looked at it. Now, what did he say the price would be? He started off with telling me 4500 Okay. Oh and God. then I told him I didn't have that amount. And then right. he lowered it to 3500 To 3500 And then he said, go ahead. No. I told him I had someone that was going to do it for 3300 So he dropped his price to 3000 Is there any written evidence of any of this? Uh, I do. I have receipts of the estimate he gave me. 
All right, let me see that. Which shows the $1,000 oh, deposit. So this is the work order. To pour concrete slab on both sides, and the amount you give here is $3,000 with a deposit of $1,000. Yes. So this is the work order, and it says a deposit $1,000. Yes. Which you paid. Now, what yes, is... Yes, I did. So he started working on it. He put a frame around. Why? Right, which I assume that's the first thing you got to do. Yes. If it's concrete, you got to put a frame around it. Right. First. The okay. But they weren't the dimensions we agreed upon. So when you came home, you saw it and you say, when hey, I, I don't like home, this. When I came home, I went out there and I saw, I said, this is not what we agreed upon. And he said, well, I'm close. I'll come back. Okay. So he came back and I said, Raul, we wanted the whole side done. Gerona, I measure in front of them and I show them how far with no, the tape you measure. Did, you told they us did how a walkthrough with you me. You didn't show it. They you did a walkthrough with me. He I did with the tape measure. Go ahead. I measure okay. exactly. What? And okay. I show them exactly. All right. You guys aren't agreeing. I don't know what the measurements say. I know what we told you and what you told us you were going to do for us. He said, no, if you want that done, you have to pay me more money. Pay me another thousand dollars to do the other side to the dimensions we told him we wanted. And then I said, well, what about the walkway there? leading to the fence, he's like, oh, you want the walkway done? That's another $500. And I'm like, come on now. Now let's hear from you. First of all, scam lady right here trying to rule my reputation. You're a scammer. I'm not questioning your competence, OK? The only question is, did both of you ever get together and say, we now agree this is what it should be and this should be the price? She knew the size that she wanted that we agree on. We're not contractors, and we don't know dimensions. Okay. We just well, told them how, how it should be. How do you guys be. know your measurements? We don't. Okay. We you don't. You wear the you phone to give me your measurements. measurements. OK, they're not professionals, OK? OK. So they said, we would like concrete over here. Yes. We'd like concrete over here. And we'd like grass here. And that's Now, you're so, OK. Did you then measure what all that would come to? All that was measured, and all, all that well, was... Well, then uh, how come... If you both are agreeing on exactly where the cement should go, then how come you're suddenly saying there's not enough concrete to do that? Because the measurements that were on that paperwork, that's 10 yards on that paperwork. They weren't measuring it. That was plain You to would them. have to measure it. It was, it was plain to them, and it was shown. I it was showing no, them it everything after it was done. She wanted an additional concrete because she wants the slab to come all the way to the end of the house. But that's not the measurements that we measure we went through. If that measurement wasn't enough to cover that extra part you wanted, then he's fair in saying if was, you want this. That's not the area we agreed they upon. Both we, don't know, they we don't both know measurements, Your Honor. OK. We don't it, know measurements. He told us what the measurements were, and then he wrote them down. You aren't agreeing on what that extra part was that they wanted. They wanted an extra part of concrete. And that was... extra part of concrete is not put on this. No, it's not. But that's what they wanted. So when you gave them an estimate, at that point, you should have said, well, if you want this part, that you have to pay this much more, not after it. And I have more evidence, Your Honor. Um, I'm not sure if I can show the video I took of my yard, the way he left it. And when I ask him, if I could have my money back since we couldn't come to an agreement. He's like, no, half the work is done. Well, these pictures don't show half the job being okay. done. Okay, every place looks like it's all torn up before it's finished. So you can't then go and say, how come the place is messy? It's, it's messy because it's in the middle. So you don't want him to finish. He can't finish. I didn't decide I wanted him to stop. But now I can't even pay him, Your Honor, because I had to call the contractor's board and file a complaint because he was charging me $1,000. He's not even a licensed contractor. They fined him because he was charging me more than he was supposed to as a okay. handyman. And we have the proof that they cited him $2,500 because he's not For supposed fraud. to take jobs okay. over that amount. What they're saying is the truth. They did report me. You're on me. They did report the me. They did report me. OK, so when you accepted that job, you weren't yet a contractor. First a, of all, a licensed contractor. OK, first of all, Joanna, nothing of that was said at that point because I was referred by her sister, previous customer of mine. He came to us as the contractor, and that's why we gave him our money. We filed a complaint with the contractor's board, and they found out he's a handyman. He's not licensed. We didn't know that at the time. So they find you him did because have a he took $1,000 right? from us. I have a certificate of professional finisher working for 22 years, Your Honor. I got pictures on my projects before and after all my projects. It's not an Oprah house. 
But I can make it like Opera House, okay. but customer That's has to pay for this. Okay, okay, okay. okay. The deposit was a thousand dollars. Yes. And he has spent Yes. If it's two hundred and fifty dollars a day, and you said he's been there for two days, that's no, five. No, he was supposed to come. He was he only there, was there for thirty minutes. Two days. He, no, he stayed I was for thirty minutes, minutes, Your Honor. And my prep he work stayed, was done. No, and he I did some expenses at the warehouse store. None of you are green on anything, and you thought that you were getting that whole thing for $3,000, yes. okay? Even though, to be fair, in your original complaint, you were willing to go up to $3,500. And the whole cost of the thing, even when he added this stuff, would mm -hmm. be 3300 So truthfully, what you were willing to hire him for, he was willing to do for $200 less than the 3500 that you said you were willing to have for the project. He never agreed on 3500 You said in your statement here, 3500 That's a sworn statement. The receipt says $3,000. I understand okay. that was the receipt, that, but that isn't the contract. Okay. That's just he an estimate for what it would cost. It You're saying here, he originally said 4500 mm -hmm. then he said 35 You were okay with that, and then... What the final price is he's coming in is thirty three hundred, which admittedly is more than three thousand, but it's less than thirty five hundred. Okay. So what I don't understand is why is this a debate in the first place? He's willing to do what you want, he make it look not. like Oprah, put the extra concrete mm -hmm. at two hundred dollars less mm -hmm. than you agreed to. He wasn't willing to come back, Your Honor. He was not going to come back and do what we agreed upon, period. And this happens in construction cases, and you're in the business, so you know that. If for whatever reason, you decide you're not happy. You don't get along with him anymore. Mm -hmm. You don't want him around because you guys argue, you fight, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Then you decide to pull out of the project. You don't get deposits back because deposits are there specifically for the possibility that the purchaser will pull out for whatever reason, even a good reason. Mm -hmm. So I can't order him to give you back the $1,000 deposit because you change your mind in the middle, maybe for good reason, mm -hmm. but you just decided you want someone else to do it. We also have No, I don't care about the cleanup. Okay. You made a decision to change your okay. mind on that. So case dismissed. I will never allow him to work for me. I don't trust him. He lied about everything he said, and he's a crook. She wants an Oprah house. Oh, my God. Yeah, paying uh, twenty. $300, she wants a $5,000 job? No way. I will never do any work for customers like that. Thanks for watching. Now please approach the bench. The way I look at it, you have two options here. Option A, watch more Judge Jerry. Option B, watch more Jerry Springer. The choice is yours. Now get out of my courtroom. You have more clips to watch. And don't forget to subscribe.